folks, welcome back to another video. I haven't been with you in a while, and that's because I've been working on a bit of a personal project. So, alongside my love of twisty puzzles, perhaps my main other hobby these days is abstract strategy games. Now, if you're not familiar with these type of games, uh, abstract strategy games are, are board games that focus on pure strategy and tactics. So, uh, typically they're games between two players uh, without randomness, and, and they have what we call perfect information. So, all the information you need to play the game is on the board. There's nothing hidden, like in a, a poker hand or anything like that. Um, all the information is open. And so these type of games are uh, typically reward lots of study, um, practice of good strategy and deep tactics. And uh, they can be rewarding for a very long time. You can play these games forever. And typical examples, of course, would be chess, Go, uh, Shogi, which is Japanese chess, one of my favorite games on the planet. And all these games, you know, they're, they're lifestyle games, potentially. You can get deep into them, play them every day, and, and never really exhaust the possibilities. Um, and I find abstract strategy games really rewarding. And, and so recently I decided that it'd be interesting to see if I could capture some of the things I love about twisty puzzles in the form of an abstract strategy game, a pure game of strategy. And I've been thinking about this for a while, um, but I was looking around at some recent abstract strategy game designs, reading people's posts on forums on Board Game Geek and sites like this, and an idea started to, to crystallize. And um, I actually did come up with a game which is called Permute, and uh, that's what I'm going to show you in this video. But before I get to that, um, I wanted to show you this website here, uh, Mindsports. So Mindsports is the creation of a guy called Christian Freeling. Christian Freeling is a pretty legendary inventor of abstract strategy games. And uh, if you go to his site, which is mindsports.nl, of course, I'll put a link in the description as well as a link directly to permute my game on Mindsports. You'll, you'll be able to go to this page called the Arena and have a look at Christian Freeling's most important designs. Um, now, he selected kind of six games out of his uh, historical inventions over the last, oh, I don't know, probably 40 years or more by now he's been working on games. And uh, so his top six are here, the the Grand Chess, uh, Dameo, Emergo, Seago, Simple, and, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce this one, Storysend, maybe. Uh, but all these games are really unique and standouts among the abstract strategy game community. I'm personally not hugely into all of them. You know, these are very personal tastes. Um, Grand Chess is a, a larger variant of regular chess played on a 10x10 board. Dameo is a very interesting modification of drafts, which we know in the States as, as checkers. Um, but drafts is, is typically played on a 10x10 board and uh, is substantially better than our traditional game of checkers, in my opinion. Um, and Dameo takes that kind of to a new level. Um, so all these games really have something unique about them. And if you go down the arena page, uh, a number of classics that might be familiar to you are here as well. So there's some other modifications of chess, like Chess Plus. Uh, we have, of course, Chess and Shogi, the originals. We have Go, um, probably one of the most respected games of abstract strategy and spectacularly difficult to get good at. I've been trying for many years. Um, so it's worth coming on Mindsports, checking out the arena, and looking at some of the classics, and of course, uh, Christian's most remarkable discoveries in his many years of inventing games. For my money, um, Havana and Starweb are two favorites of his uh, for me. So Havana is a deeply strategic game of building connections on a hexagonal board. Starweb is another game about making connections, but it uses a unique scoring mechanism that leads to a deeply strategic game. Uh, I won't go into the details of all these, but these are just my recommendations. If anybody is interested in hearing more about these, I'd be happy to sort of give a top 10 list or some kind of profile of some of the most interesting modern abstract strategy games, in my opinion. Um, I actually write quite a bit about these on my personal blog as well, so I'll, I'll drop a link in the description to those. Uh, so that's the arena. If you go to Mind Sports and then you go to uh, the pit here on the menu, so this is an area where we have some of Christian's many more outlandish creations over the years and also contributed games from other parties, including yours truly. Um, so I revealed Permute on the Board Game Geek Abstract Strategy Games Forum uh, maybe about a week or so ago, and um, 
I was very pleased and surprised to find that, that Christian was quite fond of the idea. So I, I dropped some hints uh, in uh, subtle and some less subtle ways that I'd love to see it implemented online so people could give it a try. And um, lucky for me, he and uh, Ed Von Zahn, who does his programming for Mindsports, put together Permute. And so here it is. Uh, the little blurb here mentions that uh, Permute uses a scoring mechanism from one of my other favorite modern abstract strategy games, uh, Catch Up, which is also right here on the list just above. Um, so Permute mirrors Ketchup's goal and also has a new and original core behavior, the twist. Four stones in a 2x2 two two square are rotated 90 degrees in either direction, after which one of them is bandaged so it cannot be part of a twist again. So you can see I've used some cubing terminology here uh, to try and get across the inspiration for the game. Um, but let me show you what it actually looks like. So if you click on Permute on the pit page, it brings you to the rules, uh, which look more complicated than they really are. I'll just go directly to the game um, and we can play a bit with the AI here and I'll show you how it works. So this is Permute. Um, there are two ways the board can be set up at the start. So typically I play with this checkerboard formation. You'll see that the board is 12 squares by 12 squares on each side. Um, and there are two players, orange and yellow. Um, in the primary setup, as I said, everything is in a checkerboard pattern like this. Uh, there's a secondary setup as well which looks like this. Um, in either case, you know, the pieces of the two players are evenly mixed up at the start. Um, so the object of the game is to take your pieces, depending on which color you are. So I believe uh, by default here, I'm playing against the AI as uh, orange. Actually, I need to turn the AI on. There we go. Um, and uh, what I need to do is I need to bring together the largest possible group of my orange pieces during the course of the game while my opponent is trying to do the same with their pieces and also preventing me from forming a large group. Um, in order for pieces to be considered connected into a group uh, and to count for scoring purposes, they need to be connected either horizontally or vertically. So in the initial checkerboard formation, none of my pieces are connected, right? They're all sort of just connected at the corners on the diagonals. Um, so I need to get them into position where pieces are vertically directly on top of each other or horizontally right next to each other. And the bigger the connected chain of pieces I can make, the bigger my score. And at the end of the game, uh, what we do is we compare the largest group of my colored pieces to my opponent's largest colored uh, group of their colored pieces, and the largest group wins the game. So it's kind of a game of territory. I need to control enough of the board so that I can bring together pieces of my color and hopefully do so more efficiently and more effectively than my opponent. Um, the scoring me mechanism is drawn from a game called Catch Up, which introduced this idea of what's called recurs recursive group scoring. Uh, what this means is that basically, uh, if, you, if, if my opponent and I get the same sized largest group of our pieces, then we move down a notch in the hierarchy and we look at our second largest groups for each of us. And whoever has the largest group out of those two will then be the winner. And if the second largest groups are also the same size, then we go to the third and then to the fourth and so on until eventually we find a winner. Now, since Permute here is being played on an even-sided board, that means there's an even number of pieces for each player. So theoretically, I think it'd be possible to have the scores even all the way down um, and therefore get a draw. But in practice... Uh, as you'll see, each move you make in the game is quite disruptive to the state of the board, um, and the game's pretty has some complexity to it, so I think it'd be quite unlikely in practice that you get many draws, but if I'm very fortunate and people take up the game seriously and study it, it may be possible that uh, very strong, evenly matched players might get a draw from time to time, but I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. Um, I'm also looking at some alternative board setups and sizes that may eliminate the, the possibility of a draw entirely. Um, but at the moment, I don't think it's, it's going to be a huge issue. So uh, in order to put my groups together, uh, what we do as players in Permute is we perform twisting moves. So let's just, uh, I'm not going to try and play too seriously here while I'm talking, but I can show you how it works. So as you'll see, when I mouse over one of the vertices on my grid of pieces here, suddenly a little arrow pops up. And here we have an arrow going around clockwise. If I do a uh, scroll down or up on my mouse wheel, I can swap the direction of that arrow. 
and that's indicating to me that I can do a twist of this two by two chunk of pieces around that vertex, right? So let's just do a twisting move like so. And you can see now these two by two pieces have rotated 90 degrees to the right. And that's changed the position of, of all these pieces such that now I do have some connected pieces here, right? I've got three oranges here and three oranges here where I didn't have anything connected before. Uh, but that's also done the same for my opponent. And that's the core trade-off of playing permute, is that moves that help me may also help my opponent. And I have to keep that in mind um, as I try to build up my groups across the board. Now, in each move, after I do a twist, I need to pick one of my colored pieces to be bandaged. Okay, so you can see there's a little circle that comes up under my mouse cursor. And that's telling me that I can bandage one of these two pieces out of those that I just twisted. Um, so let's just, uh, for the sake of argument, we'll, we'll bandage that one. So what that indicates is that now that piece that's been bandaged is fixed in place. And from that point on, uh, I cannot make any twists on the board that involve that piece. So I've effectively locked off a chunk of the board uh, around this piece. I can still twist here, as you can see, the arrow still comes up. Uh, I can twist here, all around it. But that piece is now locked. And as you continue to play the game, um, and each player is doing the same sequence. So on, on your turn, you do one twist, and then you bandage a piece from that two by two face that you just twisted. Um, the board will get slowly more and more constricted, and eventually you won't be able to make any more twists at all. Um, when that happens, that's the end of the game, and then you total up the scores of who has the largest group. So really, the game is pretty simple. Twist, bandage, try to build more stuff. Um, the player who builds the most stuff will will win. Um, but within that, you'll find that there's quite an interesting strategic dilemma here. You know, as I mentioned, each time you twist, you're helping yourself and your opponent. So my AI opponent here did a, their twist and then bandage down here. And they've done, resulted in a similar configuration to what we saw with my move, right? Three uh, of my pieces have also been joined up along with two groups of three of their pieces. Um, so right now, we're, we're even. Nobody's come out with an advantage here yet. Um, so if I were to, to try and respond here, maybe I'd want to uh, twist something of my own to try and block off Yellow's effort to build more pieces and give myself a little bit of growth here. So again, I'm not going to be playing seriously here, but let's just engage the AI in a bit of battle here. So if I twist clockwise, this face here, now I've connected a group of six right here, as you can see. Um, and fortunately, that move doesn't give an equal size group to my opponent. So the score right now is us with the largest group of six here and the AI having a group of four just below. Um, now, in order to preserve what I've just done, I need to choose which of these two pieces I'm going to bandage uh, to try and protect this group that I've just created. So let's say we'll bandage that corner there. Now the AI is going to take a moment to think and see he's already getting into the attack here. So he's split off uh, two of the pieces from that group of six and now he's built himself a group of seven um, and left me stranded over on the side here. But that's okay. Um, you know, we're just doing this to as a demo so I'm not going to get too worried about it just right now. Um, Let's see, if I twist this one clockwise, that'll hopefully keep yellow a bit hemmed in on this side, but uh, let's just give that a go. Um, so I have, there are three of my colored pieces in this two by two that I just twisted, and I have a choice which one to bandage. Now, if I put the bandage here, in any case, this is fairly precarious, right? The, the AI could choose to be highly annoying um, and continue to disrupt my efforts, but uh, that's part of the challenge of, of the game is we need to try and make progress while ultimately the groups that we're building up are not that secure, right? Each bandaging move that I do after a twist only locks one piece in place. So it's quite possible for our opponent to do some serious damage to everything that we try to do, essentially. Um, I'm just going to keep on this 
tactic here of trying to block our uh, AI opponent from progressing too much out of this lower right corner. We'll see where that gets us. Um, so, as I said, I was I was very lucky, uh, very happy to see that Christian Freeling was was willing to take the time to implement Permute and put it on the Mind Sports website. I've seen as well uh, a couple of people on the Board Game Geek forums have gone ahead and given the game a try, which is great. Um, of course, games like this you really want to be uh, rewarding and, and strategic and and sort of to uh, support kind of high level play and and how Permute performs in that aspect will only become clear as more and more people play the game. So I hope that uh, if you're out there watching this, even if you're not normally a chess player or Go player, you might give it a try. It's a pretty intuitive game to start playing, uh, particularly if you're knowledgeable about cubing and you're used to visualizing the consequences of moves on a, on a cube, on a twisty puzzle, then I think you'd, you'd find the game quite intuitive to start learning. Um, so, you know, and it's free. So if you go on Mind Sports uh, to the link in the description, you can just go ahead and, and start twisting stuff and see how you get on with it. Um, yeah, again, I'm not going to think too, too seriously. Uh, I'm just going to try and show you how the game progresses here. Um, the AI will probably embarrass me. <laughs> it's, you know, it's difficult to play a game that relies so much on your mental facilities when you're uh, focused on, on chatting here. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I would say typically a game on the 12 by 12 board lasts about 50 turns or so, sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less. Um, so it's, it's reasonably quick uh, by comparison. A, a typical game of chess by strong players will last about 80 moves. So even though the board is bigger, this is a 12 by 12 board compared to an 8 by 8 board that we use in chess, um, the, the game doesn't last too long because you are manipulating quite a bit of the board each time you make a twist. And then when you bandage, you can potentially lock off a reasonable chunk of the board at the same time. So uh, even though there's 144 squares here, the, the areas that the players are building become crystallized fairly quickly. And, and it's something I like about the game. And one of the reasons I decided to share it on the forums actually was that I felt um, that it really you know it it felt just enjoyable to play first of all but also that um, it had potential to be something that uh, people could pick up and enjoy and even if they're not into studying the game seriously it would feel rewarding hopefully um, and that was one of my objectives was to get something of my love and, and respect and enjoyment of twisty puzzles into a a two-player competitive mind sport, really. Um, and I, I, I wouldn't dare say that I've, you know, succeeded beyond all doubt, but uh, I, th I think it's a really nice first effort. Um, I'm genuinely proud of it. So I, I really hope that you will check it out. And, and it is such an accessible game. Once you understand that you're basically going around the board, picking a two-by-two two chunk of pieces and twisting them, and then locking one in place, that's, that's the only thing you need to know how to do. That and counting. <laughs> um, and on mind sports, you don't even have to count for yourself. The the uh, AI, the uh, computer system, will do it for you. So uh, it's really easy to just jump in and, and give it a go. Now, let's take a moment here to think about <laughs> how I'm progressing, or if I am progressing, in fact. Now we have a little bit of a group developing here from yellow. I've got uh, a 14 stone group here that I've secured. I did manage to block yellow into the corner here. There's nothing they can really do to get out uh, with this group particularly. I guess they could connect here, but all I really need to do is I could turn this face to bring these pieces together and build an impenetrable wall. At that point, if I bandaged, uh, they wouldn't be able to connect these pieces. So that seems to be a useful defensive maneuver. Um, now, I'm sure that they're going to try and go up through the center, so I need to keep that in mind, too. But, you know, as I said, the game is new. I'm, I'm not pretending to be a grandmaster here, so uh, let's just see how we get on. Now, that's interesting. Rather than continue into the center, um, yellow is trying to make a move along the left here, but I think I'm going to ignore that. And uh, let's see, if I... Twist this one clockwise. 
then I can make some serious progress here. Let's do that. So you can see, you know, in real terms, there haven't been that many turns, right? We count the number of pieces here. What have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So each player has bandaged nine pieces. That means we've done nine twists. So in chess terms, that would mean we've only actually done nine moves, because uh, in chess, a move counts uh, actually two turns. So a move is a, a turn for white and a turn for black. Um, in more conventional turn numbering, we would say we've had 18 moves in total. Uh, but already a lot of the board has kind of taken shape already. Um, so it, Permute looks like a big game, but it actually comes together reasonably quickly. Um, now maybe we should try and establish a claim on the center here. So if I bandage here, that'll keep these guys secure. Looks like, looks like a fun option. We'll try that. Um, as far as the strategy for the game, I mean, I'm... I think I'm fairly typical of many people I've seen uh, around the forums on BoardGameGeek and elsewhere who create games from time to time. They uh, claim to be good designers, but not good players. I wouldn't claim to be a good designer either because this is my first game design, really, that I've ever released to the world. Um, but uh, I, I'm not the greatest player of these type of games. I do love them, but I'm by no means a chess grandmaster or, or anything like that. Um, but... Uh, so don't take my strategy advice as, as gospel by any means. But um, I do sense that like many games of connecting things, um, like Christian Freeling's own Havana or Star Web, which are my favorites, as I mentioned, um, control of the center of the board can be really important. Now, we started here with a battle in the right, but I'm trying to, uh, while I'm talking here, gain influence and control over the center because the center allows me to, to branch out and cover threats from yellow along the sides of the board from, from any direction. So if I really get the center locked down, um, I think that that does help me over the longer course of the game uh, to, to build enough territory to, to build a strong and secure group. Um, I think the most effective bandaging here would be this one. Although I need to make sure these don't get disconnected, so maybe maybe that's safer. Um, anyway, so where are we at now? I'm at 21, but my opponent is sneakily grabbing up territory elsewhere. So I need to make sure that they don't get too excited and build up a group that I cannot disrupt. So let's think about this. Um, if I do that... Ooh, that's, that's an interesting move. So... I'll just go back a step here. So what I was looking at is that the opponent yellows group here is covering quite a bit of ground and, and is reasonably bandaged in place down in the lower center and the, the middle left here. However, there's a vulnerable point here. Um, if I actually sacrifice this piece from being connected to my main group by, by turning this face here, I can actually disconnect the top and bottom half of, of their group that they're building and uh, significantly change the dynamic of play here. So I think I'm going to I'm gonna do that. Uh, oops, not, not that way. The other way. Yeah, clockwise. So you see, now this piece is disconnected forever from my main group, um, but I've also removed the connection here between the yellow pieces, and now they're only connected diagonally. And so their biggest group went from 21, the same as mine, to only 11. So uh, I, I like that kind of deviousness in this game. Um, sometimes disrupting yourself can actually do more damage to the opponent. So it's always good to keep an eye out for clever moves like that when you can. Um, so now we've got a lead of 8, which is good. I'd like to try and keep that secure. So what would be a good way to do that? Um, let's see... I think maybe turning this way clockwise and then locking this bad boy in place would be helpful, wouldn't it? Uh, so that would give them two more pieces on this group. But again, we've disconnected the top and bottom halves. So if they want to make progress on our big numbers here, they'll need to do some damage on this part of the board. Um, but if they can't connect this part, that will be helpful in the long run. 
All right, computer, what do you got for me? Let's see. Yep, as predicted, they are trying to get something going on the top half of the board where we haven't yet really uh, got into battle yet. Um, let's think about this. Now, what I should be doing, besides just worrying about disrupting their operations, is I, I need to make sure that my own groups are taking shape uh, and being protected. So, if I... Again, I could just ignore these moves over here and try to continue to build this group up. If I think if I keep building up towards their new base of operations here, say I bring that piece down, bandage it. Um, yeah, let's let's just try it. You know, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm hoping the AI will uh, school me here and there and help me to to really learn. How to play the game effectively? Ooh, that was ooh, that hurts. Oh, that's that's rough, guys. <laughs> um, so now they've they've knocked down my lead a bit here. But uh, let's see how we can respond. If I counterclockwise twist, does that help me? Not particularly. Uh, what about clockwise? Yeah, I mean, this part now is disconnected. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm in, in the full spirit of experimentation here. The game is still developing. Uh, I think there's lots of room to, to better understand strategy and how it all comes together. I think also, you know, because of the scoring system where if we tie in our largest group, the scoring then checks our second and third and so on down the line, it's important to bear in mind that you need to have strong secondary, maybe even tertiary groups. Um, so while I'm building something big and impressive, I need to bear in mind that my opponent might catch up eventually, and then my only hope would be to have a secondary group that stands up to scrutiny, if you like. So I'm trying to keep that in mind a little bit. I think 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 here. That's a pretty decent size secondary group. Um, it is vulnerable here, though. And I could expand it a bit down here, but I think ultimately I could secure a decent victory here if I can just make sure my Wiley computer opponent can't make serious progress on the top. So if I cut across this way, um, yeah, let's try that. So the question of this game of Permute will be how effective it was to try and grab this early lead. Um, again, I wasn't thinking particularly deeply uh, at the start of the game. I just wanted to demonstrate how this all works. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Suddenly we're very close. How is that happening? Um, so their largest group is 17. So that is down here, isn't it? But if I just cut that off yeah that would that would work but what's the most effective way of disruption if I do this that well that cuts their group down by a bit less hmm see one of the advantages of having this playable online is that ooh that's promising I like that yeah if I I think if I bandage either of these that's pretty annoying for my opponent. They really can't connect any of this stuff anymore. Um, yeah, so w with an online implementation like this, you see that if, if I make a move, I'm not super happy with the result and I haven't bandaged yet, I can just click the back button once and it'll undo my twist and I can... That way it, it helps me gain a, a ability to visualize what's going to happen on the board each time I make a move. I mean, the unusual thing about Permute is that each move actually disrupts quite a bit of the board. Um, you know, in Go, uh, it's already a very complicated game in Go, but you just place one stone per turn, and each stone has long-lasting tactical and strategic implications. But at least visually, the board changes very slowly, generally. I mean, you might end up making a big capture and a bunch of things disappear, but fundamentally, each time you're just adding one stone to the board. In Permute, things aren't being dropped in place 
one by one. They're being they're already present from the start and being juggled around. And that's quite unusual for a game like this. Now, for us twisty puzzle enthusiasts, we're accustomed to that kind of visual uh, craziness of things swirling about. But uh, it's unusual for for an abstract strategy game. So I'm curious to see. I mean, so far the reactions have been positive from people on the forums and such who have played. Um, so I'm hopeful that people get the hang of it and, and really enjoy what the game has to offer. Um, but, you know, like anything, it's, it's a bit unusual. So whenever something new uh, comes about in, in uh, any kind of hobby that people are passionate about, I think there'll be different reactions. Some people might find the game, um, you know, annoying to play if, if they're not able to visualize the consequences of moves very well, or if, if it feels too random um, when they try to do something and it helps the opponent a lot. I mean, it, it's these things can be a matter of taste. But I do think that there is a core interesting behavior in the game, that the twist is is new. It, it's reflective of you know the inspiration that uh, I derived it from, of twisty puzzles. And um, yeah, I think, I think hopefully people will get something out of it. So what I did there was I just tried to lock down a few more pieces in this large group down on the bottom right. Um, the opponent here seems to be focusing mainly on the top region of the board. So uh, what's, what's, what's the most annoying thing I could do here? That, that looks pretty annoying. Yeah, so that basically locks off these pieces in the corner. We'll do that. So I think we're getting down to the end game here. So because of the nature of the game, how it works... Um, the board becomes more constricted as you play and it gradually becomes harder to find faces that you can twist and, and the final position starts to crystallize a little bit. Um, so what we want to do is make sure that we prevent our illustrious opponent from really being able to make significant progress and, and catch up at the last minute. I think, I think we're going to be okay. Um, this actually looks like a pretty decent secondary group up here. Uh, yeah, it's not connected to this main body of pieces that we have here because it's only connected diagonally and not orthogonally, not, in other words, horizontally or vertically. But uh, if scoring comes down to the secondary group, we might be, might be in a good position. Um, so where are they going to bandage? Okay, not too bad. Um... All right, that might be... Well, there'll be, I think, a couple of corner moves left to make, but yeah, we're almost at the end here. All right, AI, what you got for me? Not much is the answer to that question. Um, all right, if we're going to play around in the corner. I'll just... Uh, now, one thing to note is that you can, of course, have faces that end up being like the salt face of a 2x2. Two two. In other words, all the same color. You, but you can't twist those in permute um every move that you make has to change something and if you if you just rotate around a face that's already one color there's nothing you can do to really affect the board state at all um so the part of the rules is that every turn you have to do something and in that respect the game is reminiscent of something like chess where you have uh, what the germans call a compulsion to move the term for that called zugzwang which i love to say um, and Zugzwang in chess is when you occasionally enter a situation where you don't actually want to make any moves. You'd rather just do nothing and you'd be better off, um, but you have to move. So you end up putting yourself in a, in a worse position by moving. And that definitely happens in permute. Sometimes uh, you may be in a tight position where there's only a few moves left and you really don't want to make the disadvantageous twist, but you don't have any choice. Um, so getting into that kind of position against your opponent or putting them in that position I think will end up being a big part of end game play in uh, in permute. So something one of the things I'm excited to see how it develops as people become more familiar with the game. So might be down to the final moves here. All right, what you gonna do? We got some bandaging going on, and well, that's interesting. Wow. Okay. <laughs> The computer was just very generous. I, I don't know if you can see. Let me explain here. So, you know, I've been focusing on building up this group around the bottom right here, which was been my biggest for pretty much since the beginning of the game. 
Then I have a lesser group over here on the left, and I have what turned out to be my bigger secondary group on the top. Um, but the computer just made a move up here. Uh, for, for what purpose, I'm, I'm a bit unsure. But that actually left me this twist here. Now, this top group and this bottom right one were only connected diagonally. But now I suddenly have the option to connect both of them into one massive group. So my biggest score goes from 21 pieces to 39. So, I mean, of course, I'm going to go ahead and take that. Uh, wow. Okay, that was a howler of a blunder, as we would say, in the chess world. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, and there we go. So uh, you can see the little dialog box on the top here. Yellow has officially lost. Yeah, so that is a sample game of Permute. Um, my game, lovingly inspired by the world of twisty puzzles. Um, so this game is all about building these groups of your pieces. They have to be connected horizontally or vertically. And uh, you want to build a bigger group than your opponent. But of course, all the twisting and bandaging pieces in place leads to stuff getting disrupted. And you can see right up to the end of the game, we had big changes in the board state. I mean, that move by the AI was, was a real mistake. <laughs> uh, that allowed me to connect these groups together beautifully. However, in fairness, I mean, the, the, the AI's strategic uh, vision here was not great. Um, basically, I was able to have a decent foothold in territory along most of the board. So when you're in that kind of position and you're not really having much initiative, there are, there are going to be ways where the opponent might be able to twist groups together um, and really amplify their score. And that's exactly what happened here. So... Anyway, uh, I really enjoy this game, even though I'm the one who made it. I, I don't like to toot my own horn too much, but um, I'm, I'm actually really proud of this. I'm, I'm not an experienced game designer by any means, although I think like many nerdy people, I've certainly had ideas in the past about game designs I thought would be fun. This is the first one I felt was worthy of releasing to the world because when I tried it and actually got a, a friend of mine to try it with me, um, I thought, you know what, this is actually really playable and enjoyable and it's simple to learn. Um, but the core strategic dilemma is actually really fun uh, and interesting, I think. And because it's a game about building a bigger territory, about building a score in terms of the, the largest group of pieces you can connect, um, it, it forces you to think strategically. You know, st strategy is about having a long-term vision of how you want the board to look. And it's not just about making the right moves from moment to moment. That's tactical. But strategic vision is about having that whole board picture in mind and that scoring mechanism really forces you to think longer term. How am I going to twist things into place? And, uh, you know, what part of the board can I exert control over and block off the opponent, give myself room to build? So it, it just felt like a really good marriage of the core twisting mechanic and a scoring mechanism, which I said was taken from the game catch-up. Um, and I just felt that actually, you know what, it might be worth sharing this. And, uh, so I, once I did, I'm, I'm super grateful that Christian Freeling decided to implement the game on Mindsports, where uh, there are lots of dedicated fans of abstract strategy games who do play these kinds of things and have been giving me feedback, uh, which has been great. Uh, if there is interest, it'd be fun to maybe organize a little tournament. Um, if you go on Mindsports, you can go to the player section, which is linked here up on the top, and you can sign up to an account and that will allow you to challenge people to different games online and you can play correspondence style so you make a move and then go and do other things that move gets sent to me and uh, I can then log on and respond and we play a game gradually over time um, so if you're on mind sports um, you know let me know in the comments and uh, maybe we can try and organize a few games here um, but yeah it's free so Go on Mind Sports, check it out. Like I said, I really recommend checking out Christian Freeling's main designs, uh, which are in the arena and in the the pit pages on Mind Sports. He's made some real classics, I think, that have been hugely influential in the modern abstract board game design. And uh, the fact that he kind of got behind Permute is is super, you know, a proud moment for me. I'm really really happy to see that. Um, yeah, give it a try. Let me know what you think and. Uh, I guess as the game develops, if I discover interesting strategies or if there's uh, really cool matches that come along that I want to tell you about, maybe I'll do some more videos if you're interested in that. But uh, if not, you know, I hope this was at least something a little bit different. And uh, let me know if you do give it a try. All right, so I'll see you next time. 
probably my next video will be back onto more traditional twisty puzzling stuff. But uh, hopefully you can see that there is a, a big element of inspiration in this game from the world of twisty puzzles. And hopefully I've captured something of that for you uh, twisty puzzling fans out there. So, all right, take care, stay safe, and see you next time.